you'll be able to see now then where the credits come back into play on the first page. Getting us back to the same bottom line. Yes, Rhonda. Yes, it is. We can't emphasize enough that's so very, very important now is last minute bills. We are not going to be able to get bills at the last minute. If there's anything that needs to go on the closing statement, we have to know before we send these HUDs in for approval or it can delay your closing. Even something as simple as the contract cost for the seller to pay up to $350 for a home warranty. You pick a program that's $356. That $6 now has to be rolled into the buyer's closing costs. It's going to be a roll-up line in the 1300 section. So last-minute bills, last-minute changes, things like that, are not are going to delay closings, and it can throw the numbers off. So it's very important that anything you know of that we need to have as early as possible because everything goes into the tolerance depending on what it is and where it goes on the path. And I know that sounds very simple, but it really makes a difference. Well, yes. That's the seller side, though. Yeah. Well, I agree. We, we need to get all that stuff in, and we're sometimes waiting on the buyer to pick the home market. I understand all that. Being that we got the three-day rule from the lender side, that you can't change these things. We're trying to get things in for y'all, and the lender's trying to get things in. Does that give us any chance to get a HUD earlier than the if, last minute? Like. If, all, we do. When we get documents, we usually work the HUDs. As long as we get the instructions and the documents in time, we'll get them to you. Very seldom will I know of any time we don't get them out within 24 hours at the, if we have them ahead of time. It's just right now, the lenders are all going through so many changes too that we're getting a lot of stuff at the last minute. And what used to take us 20 to 30 minutes to work the HUD is not taking one time. Especially while it's new to us yeah, and keying it in. Right. And making sure we're doing it the way the lender wants it done. The idea of getting documents at 2 o'clock and closing at 3, those days are gone. <laughs> yeah. That's not going to happen. We can't even get the approvals fast enough because they are at, the lenders are having to run a lot of these back through their attorneys and asking questions too. Because it's a learning process for everybody in the industry. So that is, I, I, I hope you're exactly right that we'll get stuff two or three days in advance. But Realistically, a lot of times that doesn't happen. And let's look at page three of the HUD. We've gone through the formula of basically how the numbers work together. Page three is more information, but it's not, it's not a calculation page that works into the way the old page one and two of the settlement did. But now HUD has determined that it's part of the settlement agent's um, responsibility to have a third page of the HUD completed for the borrower where they can see here's what your good faith said, here's what your HUD says, here's the comparison, did it go up, did it go down, is it out of line, for them to compare line by line. So the very first comparison of the good faith estimate and HUD charges, and those are the areas of fees that can't change. Reference to the HUD line number, what did your good faith say, here's what your HUD shows. <coughs> then there's a second block in that top half, same thing, we carry over what was on the good faith, what the HUD shows, and this, the system even automatically does this calculation of whether or not you're in a 10% uh, violation. So this shows in our situation that actually it was um, a negative. So it's $42.27 less in that 10% range area than what had been originally quoted. You can go down, you just can't go. Absolutely. You can go down by more than 10%. That was a question early on. People were thinking it was a 10% either way. But it's just the going up part. And then, of course, the area of the charges that can change. Then the bottom third of the third page of the HUD is a breakdown of the summary of the loan terms. And this should be the same information that's given on the summary of your loan from the good faith. And this is information that HUD says that the title insurance company ought to be able to complete this based on information given by the lender and their closing instructions without having to interpret the documents. Finding the interest rate on the notes. Not that hard, but we do get the breakdown of the information. We may not ever see a good faith estimate itself unless the borrower brings it with them to closing. So the lender's going to be giving us closing instructions specifically. They may even give us a pro forma HUD saying here's how we want it shown. Or a breakdown in their actual closing instructions of here's the good faith estimate cost, here's the actual cost. Or charge and uh, estimate and the actual fee. 
Okay. Any other questions about the 2010 HUD? All I have to finish up is just a few questions and answers taken from HUD's website, and I'll go in and give them a plug. Did you get the latest update? They updated their frequently asked questions uh, on January 28th. So I was able to print this off yesterday afternoon. HUD.org, this is valuable information. It started at about, a, when I first printed it, about a 35-page document, and now we're up to 57 pages of frequently asked questions. But what's good is it's broken down by category about exactly what GFE block, what HUD line number the question pertains to, disclosure times, what's, who, what types of loan are affected by change circumstances and what can happen there. So it's wonderful information. But I took a handful of these from the title insurance perspective just to throw out for you. Talking about tolerance violations, if the title company in preparing the HUD sees that there's a violation, I mean, we're plugging these numbers in the computer and if it spits out that this block is, is in excess by 13%, does the title company need to cancel the closing? Well, we inform the lender, this is what Rhonda was alluding to, as soon as we get the information in, we'll produce the HUD, we give the HUD to the lender for their approval. It can't go out to the public until it's been, uh, the final has been approved. And then the lender will see that, of course. If there is a tolerance issue, then they're going to say, we are going to either need to cut a check, show that as a charge to the lender to cure the tolerance and redo the HUD, or they may say, Let's look at that. Oh, the cause of it was a changed circumstance, and the lender may at that point make the decision that they can redisclose. So all that has to go on behind the scenes before the final HUD is produced. Then we get it approved by the lender, and it's back out and ready to be circulated. But the lender has to make that option, whether they want to cure it or if there's a change in circumstance. Does a change in circumstance automatically mean three-day delay before your closing? I believe... Well, it doesn't it does, have to. Um, that's, that's still a little debatable, to be honest with you. But from the best we can tell, it does not have to be a three-day deal. But the uh, change in rate increases yes. over blank with percent would require to do a treatment levy violation. There are right. Gray areas. You'll see a little handwritten thing at the bottom of the HUD that says there are some gray areas that can be Yeah, we're getting, the closing instructions we've seen so far have not always been that consistent. 